Okay, now we move on to the second set of problems of the four chamber view, which is the right heart lesions. So, I'll talk about trichospital anomalies, uh, then of the pulmonary atresia with intact septum. This is sometimes called as a hyperplastic right heart by some of you. And, uh, and then, of course, trichospital atresia. I suggest that you pay attention to this group, uh, this group of conditions, because you know, you may have a surprise later on. Okay, so this is something which is uh, very easy for most of you. A picture in picture, one on grayscale on the right side, in the left side, and then the same on with color on the right side. So this is something which all of you will put as Epstein's anomaly and severe trichosid uh, regurgitation. But I just want to sort of uh, put a small pause and uh, suggest to you that all trichosid regurgitation need not necessarily be Epstein. So I'm just going to bring in one more condition here for a sake of differential diagnosis. So let us look at these pictures side by side. So on this is a movie which I have labeled as Epstein's anomaly. And you look at where the trichosid valve is inserting. So everywhere for your reference, right and left is marked. So you know which is the right ventricle and valve and which is the left ventricle and the valve. And this is the trichosid valve displays here. So here you see in that in Epstein's, the trichosid valve is inserting at a much lower level. It is displayed downwards, while in trichosid valve dysplasia, it stays at, at its normal uh, level where it's supposed to insert. So when you look at the anatomy of the trichosid valve, there is a downward displacement of the septal leaflet of the trichosid valve. This is the hallmark of Epstein's anomaly. However, in trichosid valve dysplasia, all the leaflets insert at the same level, normal level. So the downward displacement doesn't happen. Now, when Epstein's become more and more severe, the displacement also becomes more and more. So you have the trichosid valve inserting at a very low level, and uh, it results in a very, very specific entity, which I'm going to show to you in a couple of slides later. So that is the first difference between a dysplastic trichosid valve and Epstein's. The second is a simple radiological clue. When you look at the origin of the TR jet in color, you see both the pictures and you will see that in Epstein's anomaly, even though we call it trichosid regurgitation, the TR seems to be originating somewhere in the middle to apical portion of the RV because the trichosid valve is displaced downwards. However, in trichosid valve displacia, the TR will begin the level of the normal trichosid valve where it should be. It's a very simple thing. So you can see from the still picture very nicely that in Epstein's, the TR jet arises from somewhere in the middle of the RV cavity. Now, the third important part, we often forget the ventricle in Epstein's anomaly. So in the Epstein's anomaly, the right, the true right ventricular cavity tends to be really small, while in trichosid valve dysplasia, as you can see here, the RV is just like a normal RV. It's there. It's a big, it's a normal RV. Sometimes you may even uh, find a dilated RV. So what is the RV in the Epstein's anomaly? So in Epstein's anomaly, the right ventricle is divided into two parts. This is because the trichosid valve is displaced downwards. So you have uh, the true right ventricular cavity, which is shown by this blue. And then you have the atrialized right ventricle. That is because of the downward insertion of the uh, trichosid valve. So this is the, the green zone is the atrialized right ventricle, while the blue is the true right ventricle cavity. So it is um, quite uh, quite uh, intuitive that as Epstein's is becomes more and more severe with more displacement, the true right ventricle becomes smaller and smaller. And hence, that's not a very good situation at all. However, in trichosid valve dysplasia, the RV is normal sized. Right, so this is the three ways by which you differentiate Epstein's from trichosid valve dysplasia. The level of insertion of trichosid valve, the origin of the TR jet in color, and the size of the right ventricular cavity. 
there is one more method which we will not discuss in uh, the sake of simplicity. Now we have another entity and here again you see the right ventricle and the left ventricle marked. You see the right ventricle is distinctly smaller compared to the LV and it seems to be quite hypertrophied as well. And there is no VSD. So this is, uh, some people may just put this as tricuspid atresia, but if you look at the tricuspid valve very carefully, it seems to be opening. It's small, but it's still opening. And in this case, when you look at the outflow tracks, you see that the pulmonary artery is very small, small in size compared to the iota. And as we look at the color into the flow, and we can see that there is a reverse flow into the pulmonary artery, very clearly seen here in these pictures that suggests that there is no anterograde flow at all into the pulmonary artery. It's all retrograde flow, suggesting that there is pulmonary atresia. So there is a small RV, which is quite hypertrophied as well. You have small pulmonary arteries and you have a retrograde flow into the PA through the ductus arteriosus, suggesting pulmonary atresia. So this is what is called pulmonary atresia with an intact ventricular septum with a smallish right ventricle. So this is another entity where you see the right sided ventricle is very small here. You can see the right and the left are marked for you. The right sided valve is not opening at all. There is a large ventricular septal defect as well. The left sided valve and the ventricle are quite normal. There is a large ASD as well. So this is uh, an example of tricuspid atresia and there is a large BSD as well. So another common condition, the tricuspid atresia with hyperplastic right ventricle. So the differentiating point between tricuspid atresia and pulmonary atresia and tax septum with hyperplastic RV is that two differences. One is tricuspid valve typically may be uh, hyperplastic, but it opens in PAIVS. And of course, the ventricular septum is intact in pulmonary atresia and tax septum. While in most forms of tricuspid atresia, you find a VSD. So here I have drawn two types of tricuspid atresia in this picture. The right ventricle is always small. The tricuspid valve is atritic. So all the blood from the right atrium will have to go to the left atrium, then to the left ventricle, and blood enters the right ventricle through the VSD. There are two types of tricuspid atresia. One where the great arteries are related normally, which means that pulmonary artery comes from the right ventricle and the iota comes from the left ventricle. The second type is tricuspid atresia with TGA, where the right ventricle gives rise to the iota and the left ventricle gives rise to the pulmonary artery. Now, this is very important looking at the outflow tracks because typically when there is a tricuspid atresia TGA, often it will it will also will be associated with aortic arch anomalies also, usually coarctation. So let us see an examples of both. So this is tricuspid atresia with normally related rate arteries. I'm showing the three vessel view. You can see that the PA in comparison to the aorta is definitely smaller. And we can see that the two branch pulmonary arteries are also smaller. And the bottom right, you can see the three vessel tracheal view with color. The iota is big while the PA is smaller. So this is obviously suggesting that there is pulmonic stenosis. So let us see the, another example. So the right ventricle is very small here. You can see that. Again, you can see that the right ventricle is very small. The left sided valve is opening very nicely here while on the right side, there is absolutely no opening of the valve. So it's tricuspid atresia. Now, where the arrow is pointing, that is where the ventricular septal defect is. And if you can very clearly see that the VSD is very small, it's restricting. And you can see the color flow also there, small VSD. So tricuspid atresia with a restrictive VSD. Now look at how the great arteries are related here. Pulmonary artery is large and it is coming from the left sided ventricle while the iota is much smaller and that is coming from the right sided ventricle. So what is actually happening is the VSD determines the amount of blood which can go into the right ventricle and the outflow which is arising from the right ventricle. So if the VSD is small, the right ventricle will be underfilled and the outflow which comes out from the right ventricle also will be small. So if it is pulmonary artery coming from the right ventricle, it causes PS or pulmonary stenosis. Or if the iota is coming from the right ventricle, it will cause coarctation of iota. That is the reason why in tricuspid atresia, it is not just a four-chamber view, but the outflow tracks also has to be seen. 
So the two entities have a completely different prognosis and management. Trichosphere atresia with pulmonic stenosis has a far better prognosis compared to trichosphere atresia with a coarctation of iota. So this is one more condition which I will show. Here you see the four chamber view in color as well. Here you see that the two atria are seen here and there is just one single ventricle. Both the valves are opening into the same ventricle. So this is another type of single ventricle which is called the double inlet type of uh, single ventricle. This is uh, again a more common type of single ventricle. So for me uh, there are different types of single ventricle cases I showed to you. I showed you HLHS, I showed you pulmonary atresia with intact septum with hypoplastic RV. I showed you tricuspid atresia and now I showed you double inlet type of left ventricle. The double inlet LV and the tricuspid atresia tend to have the best prognosis of the lot because in both these cases the main ventricle is the left ventricle. However, in hypoplastic left heart the main ventricle is the right ventricle. Right ventricle is okay in utero, but after birth we want the left ventricle, that's a stronger ventricle. 